Greetings, um, and welcome to our worship service for Kiyoki Chapel. I'm Mert Shane, pastor of our church, and I'm delighted to have you with us once again. As you notice that uh, we are not at the chapel, we are in our home and providing the service for you today. Welcome to Black History Month. Um, there are several great stories in our uh, news for the new spirit for our conference relative to black history and I would strongly recommend that you go to that website and view them um, in particular of uh, Mary McLeod Bethune uh, who was instrumental in what is now Bethune-Cookman uh, University as well as uh, several other individuals there. Uh, not only church related, but also some non-church related folk and some of the work that they did, uh, which is being recognized for Black History Month. Let us begin our worship with our call to worship. We are crucified with Christ. It is no longer we who live but Christ who lives in us. For to live in is Christ, and to die is gain. Come, Lord Jesus, may your loving Holy Spirit fill us in this time of worship. Let us pray. Come, my light, and illumine, illumine my darkness. Come, my life and revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame of divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of thy love. Come, my king, sit upon the throne of my heart and reign there, for thou alone art my King and my Lord. Amen. For our children's sermon today, I brought several things with me. Um, my granddaughter has been wearing these socks, and you'll, if you were here, you'd be able to feel that they're nice and soft. Also, some silk, which is very soft, as well as this baby type blanket, which is very soft. Now, what do all those have in common? Well, all of them are very soft materials. And how do we know that they're soft? It's because we touch them. We touch and we use our senses. Touch happens to be one of them. We also smell and taste, um, and we hear. But these are just one of the types of touches that we have, the types of senses. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus was about touching. He touched this woman's hands and healed her. And so we are very aware of our sense of touch. And so we need to always be aware that Jesus is with us. He touches our lives and heals us and allows us to grow and learn and prosper. And so as you go through life today, recognize your sense of touch. Who's touching you, how they're touching you, what you are able to touch in your life and recognize the love of God that touches each and every one of us. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us to share your love through our words and our actions, especially your touch. Amen. And that was a part uh, from Sandra Anderson, who does a lot of the children's sermons. As we come to our time of prayer, we 
want to keep in mind those individuals that are a part of our congregation that are uh, recovering, some that have been sick and some that have been injured. Um, and so we lift up uh, some of them, and since I have not heard them from them by name, I'm not going to call them um, as such in our prayer time, but people to keep in mind especially those victims of uh, COVID-19 that are still struggling with the virus, as well as all of us are struggling with being cooped up uh, from this virus. So let us pray. Precious Lord, we give you thanks that your Spirit has gathered us today to attend to your word, sing your praises, and be nourished by your presence. We are gathered because we want to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. We long to gaze into your face, to understand your ways, to hear clearly your summons to us. Yet your way is not always clear to us. We debate among ourselves just what you would have us do to be faithful followers. Give us patience to let you disclose yourself to us on your terms rather than ours. Enable us to wait for you, to allow you to rearrange our expectations of you. Give us the grace to let you be who you are for us, rather than whom we would have you be. For you are God, and we are not. You are Savior, but not always on our terms. Give us the humble wisdom to let you be you, and in turn, for you to heal and help us be who you intend us to become. Help us set aside the cares and worries of the day. Teach us to turn our hearts to you that we may leave this place refreshed, renewed, and restored, ready to serve you with joy. O Holy One, we confess it is not easy for us to confront the sin that divides us from you and from one another. We prefer prayer to be comforting, not challenging, are correcting, assuring, not in, in inquiring or requiring. Forgive us for failing to trust your purposes for our lives and that you come to us not with the itching desire to punish, but with the incarnate reach to heal and save us. Draw us close to you, O oh God, that we may live faithfully and love graciously as you come to us in Jesus Christ. We pray for all of those that are sick, those that are injured, those that are in the process of healing. We pray for those that care for others in numerous different ways, whether it be our garbage collectors or our grocery workers, our doctors and nurses, and all those that help us to be better people. Help us to show our love for others. Help us to pray for them that they might stay strong and continue to help us 
and help us to help others in all that we do. We pray these and other prayers in your Son, Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. At this time, we continue to give thanks in prayer for all those contributions, those that have uh, continued to support our missions, continue to help us. And so we give thanks. Let us pray. The needs of this world still come to your door, O oh God. Receive these offerings we bring. Use them in touching lives in significant ways, ways that bring strength, ways that renew hope, ways that lift up and reach out with love that you would still make incarnate. May we be the body of Christ today, and may these gifts above all else exercise Christ's ministry. Amen. Gospel lesson today is Mark 1, 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while he was still very, it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a desert, deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the gift of your holy scriptures whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with a ready willingness to hear its truths, heed its calling, and enact its lessons. Amen. Our text today is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 147. Now read verses 1 through 11 and verse 20. Part C. Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God, 
For He is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. With all the challenges that we face each day, especially right here and now, we have to deal with not only what is present before us, but also dealing with our past. There are numerous issues that we're confronting right now that uh, relate to how we're dealing with each other now. And what has happened through the years of our past. Some we understand, some we don't understand completely. Some we're not talking about. And so we've got to look carefully at what is before us. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. As we think about these scriptures today, we think about what is within us. How are we challenged? And what are we going to do about those challenges? We are all in need of healing, as we talked about, as was read from Mark. And the healing is mind, body, and spirit. We need to make sure that we return our thoughts to God. And so as you look at the pandemic, as you look at uh, racial strife, as you look at the economy, as you look at all these challenges that we've had in our past and are dealing with in our present, how strong are we now so that we can move forward as we look at the future. So what are we truly in need of in order to be restored so that we have enough strength to make it through? What are we depending on? Well, naturally, we need to depend on our belief in God. Are we truly focused on what God can do in our lives? Or are we only focused on what we can do or what our neighbors can do for us. Do we truly believe that God has the ability and the power to strengthen us through the difficult times? Well, our message from Psalm is how great God is. Sing thanks and praise to God. And how often are we doing that? Are we taking the time to do that on a daily basis, on a ritual? Uh, are we simply just taking God for granted? Are we spending time like Jesus focused on prayer? In our reading from Mark, Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law. 
And many times we take that scripture and, and manipulate it or question it because here's a woman that was sick and now all of a sudden is healed and jumps up and starts serving dinner. And many times our chauvinistic thinking is here she is doing for the men of the house. Instead of looking at how thankful she is that she's able to now function because of the healing touch of Jesus. See, we focused on the stuff from the past instead of looking at what strength she got from within because of the touch of Jesus. That healing touch that we all have the ability to receive when we simply ask God for help. Healing brings new purpose. That's what happened to her. She had new purpose. See, when we're sick, we don't think in the same manner that we do when we're well. Or when we have been rejuvenated, we get stuck in that old stuff, in that old thinking. But when we are healed, we have new purpose, we have new energy, we have life, and have it abundantly to the point where we want to show it to others, to serve others, to care for others, to show our own strength and ability. Jesus' time in prayer was a time to restore oneself. Do we think about our prayers doing that? Do we think about being re-energized as we take time to pray? Or are we just going through a ritual? Are we just saying the same thing over and over and thinking that's what God wants and that's what God needs, so we'll just do that? Or are we taking the time to say, I really care about so-and-so and I'm thinking about them. Let me pray for them. Jesus is focused on this time of recovery. How challenging it must have been having everybody show up at the door wanting to be healed, wanting to, for Jesus to cast out demons. And how much energy and strength that must have taken and how much it must have robbed them of being able to go on. And so Jesus took the time to pray to be alone, to be by Himself, to be restored and rejuvenated, that sense of recovery. When we are struggling, that's what we are truly in need of. And so that's what Jesus is doing here. That recovery. Do we take the time to meditate on God's Word for strength and wisdom so that we can make the right decisions in our day-to-day -day actions? Are we taking the time to think about what it is that we're saying, what it is that we're doing, for the benefit of others so that we can continue to grow and prosper. As I think about certain issues that we are all dealing with, most of you just say, okay, that's an issue, but I'm not going to deal with it because it doesn't really relate to me because that's not who I am. Instead of looking at how can I help my brothers and sisters in this time that are in need of help and recovery? Am I taking the time to pray for them? Am I taking the time to call them on the phone? Am I taking the time to write them a note to show that I really care about them so that they can grow and prosper and be healed? To have that sense of recovery. You see, many of you 
have not even talked about amongst your own family the issue of race relations. Oh yeah, well, we have a, a, an African American pastor and so we're okay, I have a friend and that's good enough. But is it? Are you calling your friends to check on them? Are you saying I care about you and what I see in the news and what I hear in my reports and what I'm reading draws me to concern. As I've gone through all these different workshops and lectures and presentations, I think about all my colleagues and friends that are struggling. I think about those folks that are, that I just lost recently that were prayer warriors, that were truly blessed by God, am I caring for them? Am I caring for their families? Am I showing God's love to all? Or I'm just going to be satisfied with just dealing with me and whomever's around me. The same thing holds true as we deal with the pandemic and are we concerned or are we just letting it go? That's somebody else's concern and I'm just trying my best not to get it. Am I showing God's love? And so the challenge is, can you continue to show God's love so that you can gain strength and wisdom in your growth and development? so that you can truly show your recovery as you go through each day. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for each and every day, for this opportunity to gather, to recognize your love. Life comes to those who are close to you. Help us to continue to serve others and show your love regardless of the struggles. We pray in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Now, go forth. Show God's love wherever you are, whatever you are doing. Be steadfast in your studies. Be faithful in all that you do, in your words and in your actions so that the love of God shows through all that you do and say, both this day and always. Amen. Go forth in peace and love, and show God's love wherever you are. Stay safe. Peace.